Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm going to do a continuation of the tutorial I started last week on building simple drum machines in Reactor. If you missed that tutorial, I'll post a link to it in the video description so you can check it out. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll come out with a new Reactor tutorial every week and a whole host of other stuff as well. So the problem I left us with at the end of last week um, had to do with the event table not saving snapshot data. And so we can save data in an event table, however, it's per ensemble, not per snapshot. So that means that the data in the table is going to be the same for every single snapshot, and if we edit it in one snapshot, then it'll change for every one. So obviously this is completely undesirable behavior for a drum sequencer because it means we're going to be able to save a total of one sequence which is just pointless. So we need to figure out a way to work around that. And a really typical way is to get kind of complicated and instead of using the built-in event table um, ways of just adding values to our table, just drawing on them to use like a mouse area over that and to use that to save values into a snap value array and the whole thing just gets pretty convoluted. So today I'm just going to show you a much simpler way of dealing with this and it's going to involve making our event table uh, substantially larger in size. So first I'm just going to add a new knob to our interface. Uh, I'm going to name it sequence. I'm going to give it a range from 0 to 127 so we're going to have a total of 128 different sequences to choose from. And I'm going to change the size of our table to accommodate for that. So right now we have an X range of 16 and if we want to be able to fit 128 sequences in then we'll need to have 128 times 16 values in our array. Um, so that's 2048 so I'm going to set the X size of our table to 2048. And I was previously using the size of the table to control the B input of the modulo. Um, and, you know, so that value is equal to 2048 now instead of 16. So I'm just going to delete that connection and give us a constant of 16. So our sequence length is always going to be 16 steps long. Although I'm, I'm going to change that later on in the video, but just for right now, we're going to make uh, 128. Uh, different sequences that are 16 steps long each. So we're going to take our sequence number and multiply that by 16 and that's going to be the starting point in the event table for that sequence. So the first sequence is going to take up steps 0 through 15, uh, the next sequence is going to take up steps 16 through 31 and so on and so forth. So we're going to find the starting point for each sequence and we're going to add the output of our modulo to that value. So that way we end up um, reading our sequence every time. Finally we want a way to have it so the event table only shows our current sequence instead of every one at once. So we're gonna set the X offset to our starting point for our sequence. We're gonna start set the X range to 16. Um, and that's not actually going to work at first, as you can see in the panel view. And we can change that in the properties. In the view tab, we're going to turn off the X auto fit function and turn the alignment all the way to the left. Um, just a word on the alignment there, if you leave it in the center, then your X offset point will actually be displayed in the center of your event table instead of all the way to the left, and it can just be pretty confusing. I pretty much always set my alignment all, way to, all the way to the left. Alright, so that should be enough to have uh, 128 different sequences that we can recall using the sequence knob. And so let's just take a moment to confirm that everything works. We still have our sequence that we programmed in from last time. And let's just program in uh, another really simple beat here. And we can test that. We can save this one and then go back to the first.
All right, so the next thing I want to do is kind of up the ante a little bit so we can have each sequence have a variable number of bars, variable length. And we're going to have a maximum length of 128 steps. Um, and we want 128 sequences. So we're going to want a total table size of 128 squared, which comes out to 16,384. And I'll create a knob that is going to define the number of bars for each sequence. All right, so 128 steps uh, in 16th notes is equal to 8 bars. So we'll have a maximum bar length of 8, a minimum bar length of 1. Um, each bar, like I said, has 16 steps. So we're going to multiply the output of our bar knob by 16, and that's going to give us the total number of steps for our sequence. So we're going to use that value to replace the constants that are currently equal to 16, like our x range and the b input of our second modulo here. And lastly, we want to change the multiplier for our sequence by 128. That way we will still be reading uh, each sequence to be 128 steps long. <clears throat> Alright, so you can see the first two ones that we made have been merged together. All right, and so that's our first sequence, and we can program in up to 128 sequences. And uh, when we save the snapshots, it'll save the position of the sequence knob for us and recall our appropriate spot in our event table. Um, just by just to check that everything works, I'm gonna program in a quick house beat here and. Um, check it out, and then flip back to our first sequence. All right, so you can see our first sequence is still saved. Um, and just one other thing I wanted to mention is last time we briefly went over the 2D view mode in the um, event table here, which you can access from the view tab of properties. And it looks a lot better, but you c I couldn't figure out how to draw into it. Uh, one industrious user got back to me, and it turns out that by holding down the shift key while you are drawing on the event table allows you to draw in values. So it's a little clunky, but it, it certainly does look better, so if you prefer that method, it, it is available to you. Alright, so that's all I have time for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, please check out our website at reactortutorials.com, and I'll be back with more next week.